Income Tax 2020, Schedule C, Bad Debt Expense. Come in, relax with Income Tax 2020. Schedule C, Bad Debt Expense. When thinking about the Schedule C sole proprietorship, we're thinking about the top line of our income tax equation, remembering that this will be supported by a separate schedule that the Schedule C, which has both income and expenses on it, the bottom line of the Schedule C, which is in essence net income, then flowing into the top line of our income tax equation, where we then apply the above the line and below the line deductions to get to the taxable income. So we're thinking about bad debt expense with relation then to the business as opposed to possibly bad debt expense that would not be business related. In other words, if you loan money to say a friend and the friend didn't pay you back, then that would be an example of a non-business related, possibly bad debt expense. If it's related to say a sale that was made for the business, having then a receivable, which you cannot then collect on, that's the type of thing we're talking about here, the deductibility of the bad debt expense and it'll depend a little bit in terms of the accounting methods that we're going to be using to be to be recording the the bad debt in our accounting are we using a cash method an accrual method are we using the direct write-off method for bad debt or some type of allowance method for bad debt okay so rem remember that our schedule c will have many types of effects when we have a sole proprietorship on the tax return this is the first page of the 1040 obviously the schedule c will have the schedule c which will then flow into the uh, part one of the schedule one and then it'll flow into the first page of the 1040 as we see here there'll be an impact on the self-employment tax half of that self-employment tax being deductible as an above the line deduction as we can see here and then we have the standard deduction which is not uh, unique to a sole proprietorship and then we could have a possibly a qualified business income deduction so remember there's a lot of things that are impacting the tax return with a schedule c business in addition to obviously the added schedule c this is an example of the schedule c we have the 125 on the income side we've got the 25,000 down here the net income in essence uh, then flowing then to the schedule one part one and then to the schedule c and the income line item bad debt expense so what is it can we deduct it uh, if someone owes you money and you cannot collect you have a bad debt uh, there are two kinds of bad debts, business bad debt and non-business bad debt. So we're thinking about bad debt. We're thinking about, okay, someone owed us money. They're not going to pay us the money. That's kind of like a bad debt. So then can I deduct that? A business bad debt is generally one that comes from operating your trade or business. You may be able to deduct business bad debts as an expense on your business tax return. Uh, business bad debt, a business bad debt is a loss from uh, worthlessness of debt that was, e was either of the following. Uh, created or acquired in your business closely related to your business when it became partially or totally worthless. So the most common type of bad debt would typically come and arise from your business operations, possibly doing work, services, or providing goods on account, meaning you didn't get money at that point in time, but you got a receivable and you then want to collect on the receivable, but you have determined that you never will be able to collect on the receivable. So we're really looking at those business type of bad, de bad debts, which could uh, are much more likely to be a, a deductible uh, ability to a deduct a bad debt for the business. But again, it depends on certain factors with regards to our accounting methods. So bad debt expense, a bad uh, a debt is closely related to your business if your primary motive for incurring the debt is a business reason. So obviously, if you're taking on the debt and the reason you're taking on the debt is, order, is for a business reason, the primary business reason being to generate revenue. So if you're taking on debt in the course of your business with the goal of revenue generation, then you would think it would be a debt, you know, basically related to the business. Business uh, bad debt are mainly the result of credit sales to customers. So that means we sold something, goods or services on account. We basically invoiced the customer. They owe us money. Uh, because of the goods or service that were provided. Uh, they also can be the result of loans uh, to suppliers, clients, employees, or distributors. So we may have made uh, loans, meaning they owe us money. We loaned out the money to somebody else for a business reading, reason, and they're going to be paying us back. So that's another way that the debt could be incurred uh, on a business side of things. Goods and services customers uh, have not paid for are uh, for are shown in books as either accounts receivable or notes receivable. So if they haven't yet paid the debt 
and we did good, we sold goods and services, then we basically have an accounts receivable typically, or if we loan someone else money, like an employee or something, then we're going to have some other kind of receivable, an asset on the books. Now, obviously, when we think about entering into the Schedule C, we're not usually looking at the balance sheet. Accounts receivable is on the balance sheet. <laughs> you know, the uh, notes receivable is on the balance sheet. But, uh, but the balance sheet, of course, is, is where those receivables would be that could then become bad if we can't basically collect on them. So if you are unable to collect any part of these, these accounts or notes receivable, the uncollectible part is a business bad debt. So once it becomes uncollectible, it's bad. Then you would think you would reduce the, the asset account, reduce the accounts receivable or the loan. And that's when you might record then an expense uh, at that point in time, an expense possibly being a deductible item on uh, the tax return. So the accrual method, if you use an accrual method of accounting, you normally report income as you earn it. Uh, you can take a bad debt deduction for an uncollectible receivable if you have included the uncollectible amount in income. So in other words, remember when we think about the accounting methods that we can use for the Schedule C, many small businesses might be using a cash method. And if they're using a cash method, then they won't even really have an accounts receivable, right? Because the receivable basically won't be on the books because you're not recording any income till you actually receive the cash. But if you're in this type of business where you send out invoices and you're going to get paid later and you're tracking the receivable, most likely then on the receivable cycle side of things, you have uh, an accrual component there. And that means that you recorded the income when you did the work, when you provided the, the inventory or did the services and you recorded a receivable, not cash. And that means that if you're reporting your taxes on an accrual method, you might be taxed on income that you have not re yet received in cash because you did the work and you recorded it on an accrual me method. So then at a later point in time, if you can no longer get paid, if you never get paid for that receivable, then it's quite possible like that you pay taxes on income that you never really received because you never got the receivable. That, that's when you would think then you should be able to take the bad debt expense. You should be able to then say, okay, I never got paid and, and I paid taxes possibly on it last year or whenever I incurred, whenever I did the work. This year I, I've determined it's not going to be paid. So you would think then instead of amending the prior return or something like that, right, you would take the deduction in uh, the current year. So that would be the normal process. But if you're on a cash method, if you use a cash method of accounting, you normally report income when you receive payment. You cannot take a bad debt deduction for amounts owed to you that you have not received and cannot collect if you never included those amounts in income. So if you're on a, on a cash method, uh, then, then of course you can't really do this because you wouldn't have recorded the income. In other words, if you were to invoice the client, usually if you're on a cash method, you're not in the type of business that does the work before you get paid meaning you might be in a business where you do the work at the same time, such as like a restaurant or something like that, where they're paying you at the same point in time that you do the work. But even if you, if you were on a cash method for taxes and you invoice clients, if you, if you invoice the client, uh, that's usually when you would record income on an accrual method, and then you would have an accounts receivable. But if for taxes, you, instead of doing that, you basically recorded on a cash basis method, then you never would have recorded the income in the first place. So it never would have been recorded as, as income. So you're not going to get a deduction for the bad debt expense uh, when it becomes bad because you would have never recorded the income in the first place. So, so it's not reversing an error that happened on the temporary accounts or like that happened on the income statement if you're on a cash method because you, you never would have recorded the income. Therefore, you don't get the expense that would basically uh, match it out.